the life and sad ending of Oliver Hardy. Oliver Norvell Hardy was born on January 18, 1892, in Harlem, Georgia. His father, Oliver, was a Confederate veteran who had been wounded at the Battle of Antaham on September 17, 1862. The older brother, Oliver Hardy, assisted the father in running the vestiges of the family cotton plantation following the Civil War. Hardy's mother, Emily Norvell, was the daughter of Thomas Benjamin Norvell and Mary Freeman, descended from Captain Hugh Norvell of Williamsburg, Virginia. The family moved to Madison, Georgia in 1891 before Norvell's birth. His father died less than a year after his birth. Hardy was the youngest of five children. His older brother Sam drowned in the Oconee River. Hardy pulled him from the river but was unable to resuscitate him. As a child, Hardy was sometimes difficult. He was sent to Georgia Military College in Milledgeville as a youngster. In 1805, when he was 13, he was sent to Young Harris College in North Georgia fall semester. He had little interest in formal education, although he acquired an early interest in music and theater. He joined a theater group and later ran away from boarding school near Atlanta to sing with the group. His mother recognized his talent for singing and sent him to Atlanta to study music and voice with the singing teacher Adolf Dom Peterson. He skipped some of his lessons to sing at the Alcazar Theater for $3.50 a week. As a teenager, Hardy began styling himself Oliver Norval Hardy, adding the first name Oliver as a tribute to his father. Hardy was initiated into the Freemasonry at Solomon Lodge No. 20 in Jacksonville, Florida. He was inducted into the Grand Order of Water Rats along with Stan Laurel. In 1910, the Palace, a motion picture theater, opened in Hardy's hometown of Milledgeville, and he became the projectionist, ticket taker, janitor, and manager. He soon became obsessed with the new motion picture industry, and was convinced that he could do a better job than the actors he saw. A friend suggested that he move to Jacksonville, Florida, where some films were being made, which he did in 1913. He worked in Jacksonville as a cabaret and vaudeville singer at night and at the Lumben Manufacturing Company during the day. It was at this time that he met Madeline Salon, a pianist for whom he married on November 17th, 1913, in Macon, Georgia. The next year, he made his first movie, Outwitting Dad, in 1914, for Lubin Studio, billed as O.N. Hardy. His personal life, he was known as Babe Hardy, and he was billed as Babe Hardy in many of his later films at Lubin, such as Back to the Farm, in 1914. He was a big man, standing 6 foot 1 inches, or 1.85 meters, and weighing up to 300 pounds, or 136 kilograms, and his size placed limits on the roles that he could play. By 1915, Hardy had made 50 short one-reel films at Lubin. He moved to New York and made films for Pathé Casino and Edison Studios. He returned to Jacksonville, where he made films for Vim Comedy Company, that studio closed after Hardy discovered that the owners were stealing from the payroll. He then worked for King B Studio, which bought Vim, and worked with Billy Rouge, Billy West, and comedic actress Ethel Burton Palmer. He continued playing the villains for Westwell into the 1920s, often imitating Eric Campbell to West Chaplin. In 1917, Hardy moved to Los Angeles working freelance for several Hollywood studios, and he made more than 40 films for Vitagraph between 1918 and 1923, playing mostly the heavy for Larry Sermon. In 1919, he separated from his wife, ending with a provisional divorce in 1920, which was finalized on November 17, 1921. On November 24, 1921, he married actress Myrtle Reeves. This marriage was also unhappy, and Reeves was said to have become an alcoholic.
From 1921 to 1926, he acted in films including The Lucky Dog, 1921, Wizard of Oz, 1925, 45 Minutes from Hollywood, 1926. In 1927, Laurel and Hardy began sharing the screen together in Slipping Wives, Duck Soup, no relation to the 1933 Marx Brothers film, and With Love and Hisses. Roach Studios supervising director Leo McCary recognized the audience reaction to the two and began teaming them together, which led to the start of a Laurel and Hardy series later that year. They began producing a huge body of short films, including The Battle of the Century, 1927, Should Married Men Go Home, 1928, Two Tars, also 1928, Unaccustomed As We Were, 1929, marking their transition to talking pictures, Birth Merks, 1929, Blotto and Bratz, both in 1930, Another Fine Mess, in 1930, and Be Big, 1931. In 1929, they appeared in their first feature, in one of the review sequences of Hollywood Review in 1929, and the following year, they appeared as the comedic relief in the lavish Technicolor musical featured untitled The Rogue Song. In 1931, they starred in their first full-length movie, Pardon Us, and they continued to make features and shorts until 1935. In 1932, The Music Box won an Academy Award for Best Short Film, their only effort to receive such an award. In 1937, Hardy and Myrtle Reeves divorced. He made Zenobia with Harry Langdon in 1939 while waiting for a contractual issue to be resolved between Laurel and Hal Roach. Eventually, however, new contracts were agreed upon, and the team was lent to producer Boris Moros at General Service Studios to make The Flying Deuces in 1939. While on the lot, Harry fell in love with Virginia Lucille Jones, a script girl whom he married the next year. They enjoyed a happy marriage for the rest of his life. In 1939, Laurel and Hardy made a jump at Oxford and Saps at Sea before leaving Roach Studios. They began performing for the USO, supporting the Allied troops during World War I. In 1941, Laurel and Hardy were signed by 20th Century Fox, as well as Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer in 1942. The films proved very successful. Laurel and Hardy completed eight features during the war years. MGM's two-picture pact expired in August 1944, and Fox's series of six Laurel and Hardy pictures ended when the studio discontinued B-picture production in December 1944. In 1949, Hardy's friend John Wayne asked him to play a supporting role in The Fighting Kentuckian, while Laurel began treatment for his diabetes a few years previously. Frank Capra invited him to play a cameo role in Riding High with Bing Crosby in 1950. During 1950 to 1951, Laurel and Hardy made their final film, A Tall K, also known as Utopia. In May 1954, Hardy suffered a mild heart attack, and he began looking after his health for the first time in his life. He lost more than 150 pounds in a few months, which completely changed his appearance. Letters written by Laurel refer to Hardy having terminal cancer, have speculated that this was the reason for Hardy's rapid weight loss. Both men were heavy smokers. Hardy suffered a major stroke on September 14, 1956, which left him confined to bed and unable to speak for several months. He remained at home in the care of his wife, Lucille. After suffering two more strokes in early August 1957, he slipped into a coma and died from cerebral thrombosis on August 7, 1957, at age 65. After he was cremated, his ashes were interned in the Masonic Garden of Valhalla Memorial Park Cemetery in North Hollywood.